I pay respect to the triple gem. <coughs> Namo das Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Namo das Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Namo das Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Now I will recollect the virtues of the triple gem. Shindai Weao Nien San Pauta Kunta Itipi so Bhagavā Arahang Samma Sambuddho Vinja Charana Sampanno Sugato Loka Vidu Anutaro Purisadam Masarati Satta Deva Manusanang Buddho Bhagavā Ti Swakato Bhagavata Dhammo Sanditiko Akaliko Ehipasiko Opanaiko Pachatang Veditambo Vinuhi Ti Supatipan no Bhagavato Savaka Sango Ujupatipan no Bhagavato Savaka Sango Nyaya Patipanno Bhagavato Savaka Sango Samichi Patipanno Bhagavato Savaka Sango Yadidang Chattari Purisa Yugani Atta Purisa Pugala Ese Bhagavato Savaka Sango Ahuneyo Pahuneyo Dakhineyo Anjali Karaniyo Anuttarang Punya Ketang Lokasa Ti Evang Buddhang Saranta Nang Dhammang Sanggang Chabikavu Bhayam Va Chambitattam Va Lumahamso Nahesati Ti So uh, this morning we have started explaining the first step in the meditation on breath, which is sato va asasati, sato va pasasati. The, uh, he, the meditator, the yogi, he breathes in mindfully, he breathes uh, out mindfully. As I have said, uh, the uh, meditation on breath uh, and the meditation in general uh, starts with mindfulness in regard to the body. Hmm? The breath is the ideal entrance into the uh, practice of mindfulness in regard to the body. We have explained because the breath is bound to the body. And the real nature of the breath is the same nature as the body, namely the four elements. We have already explained when we understand the body, uh, we will understand the feelings because our feelings are based on the body. When we understand the feelings, we will understand the mind, because what mind differentiates is uh, all concerned with our feelings, how we receive the objects, so we feel. Uh, so, uh, what we differentiate is in accordance how we receive the object on uh, the base of the touch, touch with, uh, is with the object. The object is a body, in fact, hmm? because we receive the outside world through the body, through the eyes, through the ears, hmm? through the nose, through the tongue, and through the touch of the body. Then our mind differentiates this material and on the uh, base of the mind, we then uh, uh, 
the nature of uh, what we experience is uh, our mental objects. Now, Uh, in order to understand the nature of the world, first we have to cultivate uh, the uh, samadhi. Only the mind in samadhi can understand things as they really are. And the nature of liberation in Buddhism is nothing but understanding things as they really are. We have to know that uh, things as they really are, are not actually the things that we think they are. Uh, what we actually experience is uh, quite different from what we think. So, uh, the first thing to learn and we are using the meditation on breath to learn it, is to appease our mind. So we start now by explaining the process of appeasement of the mind. The, uh, uh, I have already emphasized the process of learning shamatha and vipassana is a process of sublimating the mind, making the mind more and more subtle. Only the subtle mind can perceive and analyze the subtle objects. The gross mind has no such ability. Impermanence is also a subtle object. The real impermanence is impermanence happening in every instant of our experience. Because we do not see this impermanence, we uh, are deluded and believe that inside of us there is something lasting and outside of us there is something lasting. Even so, our science is uh, Advanced science is teaching us that our earth is turning around the sun with a speed of I don't know how many kilometers or miles as you use in America in a, a per second. Still, we believe that our world is standing and that so there is something in us, also in our experience of the world, that is standing and that is lasting. We do not see uh, the real nature of the world because our mind is not a beast. So the first thing is to appease the mind. And appeasing the mind is the science of samadhi. Samadhi basically means in the Sanskrit language, it is nothing mystical. It is something very, very practical. It means uh, some means correct. This prefix sam in Sanskrit means on one hand correct, and on other hand it means uh, uh, together. Adhana means application. So the samadhi means nothing else but the uh, our ability to apply our mind to the object correctly in the sense that the mental factors which are responsible for the content of our mind like will, attention, feeling and so on, they all together not scattered. Because our mind is scattered, we do not see things as they really are. 
uh, the, uh, as I have explained during the interview, the state of Samadhi in the Abhidharma, in Buddhist psychology, is compared to the state of a flame of a candle in a room which is free from gusts of the wind. That flame of the uh, lamp or of the candle then will become stable so we can see everything that is inside the room with clarity. If the flame is flickering, then all the objects we see will be flickering also. So, uh, first we have to develop this kind of ability to apply our mind spontaneously to the objects without uh, uh, letting it wobble. Hmm? Compared to uh, the uh, state of a, a dry pumpkin on the stream, the dry pumpkin on the stream goes wherever the stream goes. If it goes left, it goes left. If it goes right, it goes right. If it, if it whirls down, it goes down. If the mind becomes, if the perception becomes stable due to uh, mindfulness and awareness, then the uh, our mind will become appeased. Then it remains spontaneously on the object it chooses and can penetrate the real nature of the object. Otherwise, no way to penetrate the real nature of the object. The real nature of the breath, the real nature of our body and the real nature of the world we live in is impermanence. Hmm? We know very well that uh, we are now not the same as we were 10 years ago, as we were 20 years ago. Hmm? That is very easy to know. We get the, the gray hair, we get all wrinkles as we get old. But do we know that actually this process is the process of appearing and disappearing in each and every instant of our experience? We do not know. We, despite the fact that it is so logical that when we turn old, we actually are changing in each and every moment, we still think that there is something not changing something substantial. So, because we believe that there is something substantial, we hold to it. According to Buddha's teaching, the idea of substance is due to clinging. If there is no clinging, there is no substance. The substance, the idea of self in, uh, in ourselves and in the things is due to clinging. Without clinging, no self in, uh, in ourselves and in outside of ourselves. The breath is the most effective instrument of this understanding. In uh, the uh, Anguttara Nikaya, there is like a, a, a section explaining the uh, nature of impermanence, the uh, nature of impermanence, uh, some believe, can be seen that 
Uh, we are experiencing different things, uh, the uh, one day and another. This is still not real nature of impermanence, uh, that we are uh, having... Uh, uh, we are not the same in the morning, and not the same in the evening. This is still not the real impermanence. The, uh, then, what is the real impermanence? Actually, we are... Uh, uh, being, we are dying and we are uh, born again in each and every instance, in each and every in breath and out breath. Now, uh, we are holding to the idea of the essence, uh, to something unchanging, uh, because uh, we have clinging. And the clinging can be only, so the Buddhism teaches, the clinging can be only effectively removed by the science of shamatha and vipassana, of the appeasement and insight. Now, if we have still clinging, it is because our practice of appeasement and insight has not gone into depth. In a, a Kachana Gota Sutta, hmm? the Buddha explains uh, that the middle way or the dependent origination which makes everything equal is the condition of neither existence nor non-existence. The uh, condition of neither existence nor non-existence is what is to be experienced by practicing samatha and vipassana. In order to experience it, first we have to bring our mind to the condition of complete calm, so, we start explaining meditation by explaining the science of samadhi. The science of learning how to apply our mind to the objects of meditation and eventually when you succeed in meditation everything becomes object of meditation. We are learning meditation so that everything becomes object of meditation. Only then you will be able to uh, get rid of suffering. The Buddha is teaching in Samyutta Nikaya, only when we have known everything, only when we have penetrated everything, only when we have let go everything, we can uh, get out of suffering. Hmm? And the, precisely the press meditation is the uh, meditation which is most suitable for knowing everything, penetrating everything and letting go everything. So now I will explain uh, the science of uh, samadhi, of correct concentration, as it is explained on the base of the Yogacara Bhumi Shastra, uh, which is the main source 
of uh, the, our understanding of the science of samadhi in the northern tradition. Uh, the Chinese as well as the Tibetan scholars and uh, yogis, they have uh, all been inspired by the teachings of this book. Now, uh, according to Yogacara uh, teaching, the learning of the uh, mastery of samadhi or learning uh, the uh, spontaneous application of mind to the object without distraction of the mind is based on nine steps which we are going to explain now on the base of meditation on, of in-breath and out-breath. The first uh, step in meditating on in-breath and out-breath, which we have emphasized this morning and also during the interview, is to uh, breathe in and breathe out mindfully. Only when the mindfulness has ripened, we will be able to enter deeply into the state of concentration. As long as mindfulness has not ripened, we have, so to say, no access into the state of deep concentration. And only in the state of deep concentration we can remove the defilements of our mind. If we do not have concentration, we will not be aware of the defilements of our mind. Please try to understand it and try to see it very clearly in your meditation. Only when the mindfulness ripens, we will be able, we will be aware of the defilements of the mind. When we the more we are aware of the defilements of the mind, the, uh, we will, the more we will be able to see the more and more subtle defilements of the mind. In the beginning we can only see the gross defilements of the mind. As we progress in meditation, we will be able to see the more and more subtle defilements of the mind, till even the most subtle defilements of the mind are removed in the state of perfect samadhi. So the process of learning samadhi, just like the process of learning vipassana, is a process of making the mind and the object more and more subtle, so that the meditator can discover and see very clearly, become aware of more and more subtle defilements. Hmm? Uh, again, uh, the light of samadhi is a guide. When you have light in the room uh, of a, a candle which is and not, uh, the flame is not moving, you see all the objects in the room very clearly. In a room where all objects are seen very clearly, no robber will dare to come, because he knows as soon as he tries to steal something, he will be discovered immediately. You can see him very clearly. Hmm? The condition of in the condition of uh, uh, samadhi, uh, 
uh, the mind becomes so sensitive that even the most subtle defilement is seen very clearly. So the robber of uh, uh, of negligence cannot come. According to Buddhism, the defilements of the mind are not the uh, nature of the mind. The defilement, so to say, they are guests to our mind. Due to developing the uh, wrong habits in the past, But because our uh, minds are not enough sensitive, our bodies are not enough sensitive, we uh, do not see the uh, rising of the defilements. So uh, the process of learning shamatha and vipassana is uh, process of making the mind more and more subtle, more and more sensitive, so that it can discover more and more subtle defilements. The process of learning meditation on the breath is exactly that. And it is a, a most suitable meditation for understanding this process of making the mind subtle. Why? It should be understood very clearly. Because the, uh, even so, the, our breathing is of the nature of the body. It is inseparably uh, linked with the mind. The base of the uh, in-breath and out-breath is not only the body, it is the body and the mind. Very important to understand. According to uh, Buddhism, and you should use this opportunity to deepen by meditation your understanding of Buddhism, the real deeper understanding of Buddhism comes through meditative experience in the meditative experience, what we experience in the world is called in Buddhism the five aggregates of existence, hmm? called skanda. They are called aggregates because they are collections of experiences which are grouped together. Now, these five aggregates, actually they are one process. The uh, mechanical vision of the world, which has made so much chaos in this world and so much suffering in this world separates the body and the mind. Hmm? It means the physical is one thing and the mental is another thing. Hmm? The Buddhist picture of the world is completely different. These five aggregates of existence, they are like one wheel turning always together. The physical and the mental is just one process. This you can best observe precisely in the meditation on the breast. Uh, the whole body and the whole mind 
if you breathe mindfully, are participating in the process of breathing in and breathing out. So, uh, the uh, the uh, say the form the 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 form uh, side of our experience, which is called the rupa, hmm? or the physical side of our experience. What is that which has form is a physical. Hmm? Uh, the or corporeality, as you may call it in in Buddhism, corporeality is rupa. Hmm? Uh, rupa, the breath is also rupa. The uh, original meaning of rupa, according to the scriptures, is that which breaks rupa ti iti rupa. And that which sees this process of breaking is called mentality or nama. Nama, to use the uh, explanation of the Visuddhimagga, uh, from the Sanskrit root namati, means that which bends towards this process of breaking. So when you uh, practice meditation on breath, the uh, uh, rupa is your breath. Hmm? And the nama is that which turns towards the breath. That which experiences the breath is called vedana, the feeling. That which perceives the breath, it's called the aggregate of perceptions. Hmm? will, attention, and so on, is the aggregate of mental formations. And the consciousness which differentiates, it, differentiates the breath, it is the aggregate of consciousness. So, when you experience the breath, you are experiencing the five uh, aggregates, which is everything in our worldly experience. If you see something more in your worldly experience than the five aggregates, according to the Buddhist teachings, you are seeing the uh, sand castles in the sky or seeing the horns on the uh, head of the hare or hair on the, uh, on the turtle seeing non-existing objects. So, uh, the breath, hmm? in breath and out breath, it is rupa. It is rupa and it is always breaking. In each and every instant it's working, it's breaking. But you uh, uh, see this breaking most clearly in in-breath and out-breath. In each in-breath and out-breath, in fact, you are appearing and disappearing again. So, uh, now uh, we have explained that this process of uh, experiencing rupa and experiencing the mind which uh, uh, turns towards this process of rupa. is one process. The rupa is the outer side of the process. You can see this process uh, as the wheel, hmm? the outer like the tire of the wheel is uh, the 
rupa hmm? is our body and the breath. Uh, that which receives this uh, experience of body and the breath, it is called the feeling Vedana. That which perceives it, it is called the perceptions, the sanya, the shyang. That uh, which turns uh, towards this, uh, that object, hmm? the corporeality or the breath, and that which leads the mind towards it, uh, these are the, and so on, these are the mental formations. And that which differentiates the breath, that is the consciousness. So you have one wheel turning together, inseparable. Hmm? The, uh, uh, you, it is very easy to be aware of the impermanence of the, out of the forms, but it is not easy uh, to be aware of the impermanence of the mind which turns to the forms. So uh, we start by studying the forms. Hmm? How do we study? Again, by a uh, process of shamatha and vipassana, process of appeasing and process of insight. Both process of appeasing and process of uh, insight is that which make the form and the mind which turns to the form more and more subtle. Please try to realize it in this uh, process of meditating. When you uh, uh, sit correctly, the breathing will be different. When you uh, concentrate your mind on the breath, the breathing will be different. When your mind is uh, agitated, the breathing will be different. When your mind is uh, 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 sleepy, the breathing will be different. So the conditioning of our body and conditioning of our mind is reflected on the quality of the breath. In order to see it, the first step, one has to be mindful. And how one becomes mindful? One, the first enemy of mindfulness is what? Laziness. In order to experience more subtle mind and more subtle breath, the first step for the meditator is to fight uh, the enemy number one, laziness. Hmm? If you don't give a K.O. to laziness, like uh, Cassius Clay, <laughs> <laughs> Muhammad Ali. <laughs> if you don't make the laziness ka'o, hmm, eh, you will not enter into the process of eh, sublimation of mind and the breath. Impossible. So, eh, Please try to see the laziness as your enemy number one, which is preventing you from purifying the mind.
Now, uh, using the teachings of Asanga in the Yogacara Bhumi Shastra, uh, what are the forces which enable us to knock out uh, the enemy number one, laziness? According to the Buddhist teaching, the first force is the force of Shraddha. Hmm? Shraddha means uh, faith. But in Buddhist sense, faith means not just faith, but it means conviction. Okapana, avakalpana. Uh, conviction means is necessarily linked to wisdom. To be uh, convinced about something, you have to uh, know something. And what makes us uh, have faith in our meditation? Please tell me. According to the Buddhist scriptures, it is the experience of suffering. Hmm? Because we have experienced some suffering, we have faith, we have conviction. We have conviction that the uh, teachings of the Buddha uh, uh, really lead to the cessation of suffering. Hmm? If we follow them correctly, we can actually remove suffering. The real meaning of okapana, ava or o, means down. Kapana means arranging, arranging oneself down with the object. This is the meaning of conviction. So, uh, I have, if I meditate on breath, in order to overcome laziness, I must be very convinced that uh, the mindfulness of the breath will enable me to uh, purify my mind and so get rid of suffering. According to Buddhism, all our suffering is uh, due to the impurity of our minds. When the minds become pure, we do not suffer. Sometimes the Buddhist teachings, because they are always emphasizing impermanence, are considered to be pessimistic. In fact, it is the most optimistic teaching that there is. It says that the, uh, our suffering due to defilements of the mind is not the real nature of the mind. So, uh, when I have a conviction that what I do is a right thing, what will, I, what will happen? The next force that enables us to overcome laziness is called chanda. Chanda means enthusiasm. Hmm? Literally, it means desire. Desire in the sense of enthusiasm. When I have faith, 
when I have conviction that what I do is the right thing, then I will have enthusiasm for it. We can only do well what we do with enthusiasm. What we don't do with enthusiasm, we will never do well. Anything you learn, languages, music, uh, art, whatever, uh, you, even your trade, uh, uh, your profession, you will never be able to do it well unless you uh, learn to do it with enthusiasm. If one does one's uh, uh, job with enthusiasm, the life becomes pleasure. If one does not do it with enthusiasm, the life becomes a hell. Hmm? So the uh, wise people, they whatever they do, they try to do it with enthusiasm. That's the secret of their happiness. So, uh, according to the Buddhist teachings, there are two kinds of enthusiasm, two kinds of desire. Desire, the kama chanda, which means desire for objects of uh, sensuality, And the other is uh, Dhamma Chanda, desire for Dharma, Fai. Hmm? In order to overcome laziness in our meditation, we have to develop the desire for the Dharma, desire for the truth. The truth in Buddhism means the truth of uh, emptiness, suchness, nirvana. And to avoid enthusiasm for uh, the enjoyment of the uh, senses. we are filled with desire for enjoyment of the senses because we are not filled with the desire for uh, dharma. When we are filled for, with desire for the dharma, we uh, do not need desire for the senses. And according to Buddhism, the taste of dharma is the best of all tastes. There is no taste better than that. But because we have not tasted it enough, we still are subjected to longing to other tastes. And precisely this longing for other tastes makes our mind agitated, not appeased. So when you have entered the state of deep concentration, it means you have overcome the desire for gratification of the senses. Otherwise, you will never enter into the state of deep concentration. Please keep this in your mind. Hmm? If you do that, uh, the uh, meditation will become always easy. Uh, the talent is nothing else but enthusiasm. Hmm? All those who have talent, they have talent because they 
are enthusiastic about what they do. And they do it with a whole heart, 100%. The talent is nothing else but that. So unless we learn to uh, do enthusiastically, we will not have much success. So when we have conviction or faith, when we have enthusiasm, uh, we can do very well boxing the uh, Enemy number one, laziness. If we don't have faith and enthusiasm, uh, we will not do very well. Uh, when we have uh, faith and enthusiasm, we will put in effort in our practice. So the third force to knock out the uh, enemy of mindfulness, the laziness, is uh, to put effort in our practice. And that we can only do when we have faith and enthusiasm. Unless we have faith and enthusiasm, we will not succeed. So now we have three friends and one enemy. Three friends are fighting well. So what will happen? We will start experiencing the uh, bliss of meditation. When we start experiencing the bliss of meditation, what will happen? The force friend will appear who will be able to knock out the enemy of laziness. And that uh, force friend is called uh, Prashrabdi. Prashrabdi, we have no one single English word to translate. Hmm? In Chinese they also translate by two words, Qing An. Hmm? Uh, Qing means uh, light and An means uh, uh, means uh, uh, peaceful hmm? or uh, appeased. Uh, the best English translation would be uh, clarity And uh, mm, uh, lightness is also all right, but the best would be Relaxation, clarity and relaxation. An has also the meaning of relaxation. Hmm? So you can translate it as lightness and relaxation or clarity as a relaxation. Lightness and clarity, they come together. When we are clear, we are light. When we are not clear, we become heavy. Hmm? I thing you must have noticed during the meditation very <laughs> when the mind becomes uh, light it it becomes clear when the mind is heavy uh, it sinks hmm? the opposite of prashrabdi uh, opposite of uh, lightness and relaxation or clarity and relaxation is uh, the daushturiam. Daushturiam means grossness. The grossness 
of the mind and body is precisely that which is responsible for our defilements. If we have no grossness, we have no defilements. Because we have grossness, we have defilements. So, please understand that the process of uh, meditation, the process of learning shamatha and vipassana, is a process of sublimating the mind, making it more and more subtle. More and more subtle means more and more uh, lightness, relaxation, clarity. What is the difference between us and the uh, fully enlightened person? The fully enlightened person is always has the, this kind of lightness and clarity. Hmm? That's why his complexion, his skin starts shining. Hmm? So, we have got four friends knocking out the first enemy in our uh, effort to enter uh, shamatha and vipassana, to enter deep concentration and see things on the base of deep concentration as they are. Hmm? And we have knocked them out by four friends. These four friends, uh, cultivating them is a process again. Uh, in the case of meditation on the breath, this process is explained in Visuddhimagga uh, in a wonderful way. How? When we uh, breathe in and breathe out, long or short breaths, hmm? if the meditator uh, puts effort and uh, enthusiasm into his practice, so explained the Visuddhimagga, he will be able to experience how due to his effort and due to his enthusiasm to keep the mind attached to the breath and not allow it to wander to uh, other objects. Uh, due to this enthusiasm, his, uh, uh, his mind and the breath which is connected with it will become more subtle because he is putting continuous effort in staying with the breath. So his mind gets more concentrated, more mindful, and due to that he experiences more subtle mind on the breath, and more subtle mind on the breath is connected with more subtle breath. When he experiences due to his effort and enthusiasm for the in-breath and out-breath, more subtle breaths, he will start, due to this lasting experience of subtle breaths, feel happiness, bliss with the in-breath and the out-breath. Our mind, I always never tired of emphasizing, our mind and the secret of learning meditation is make the meditation a, a, a pleasant experience. Our mind stays where it feels well. Where it does not feel well, it does not stay. It wants to run away. Hmm? Or if it does not run away, it just sinks becomes dull. The dullness and 
the sinking of the mind, all the enemies of meditation, they are directly connected with these two tendencies. So, uh, only when the meditator works with enthusiasm on watching his in breath and out breath, he will enter into the process of sublimation of the breath and the mind, attached to the breath. Then he will start feeling uh, happiness while breathing in and breathing out. Because he feels happiness breathing in and breathing out, his mind will stay with the breath. Because it is uh, uh, feeling well there. When the mind is fulfilled with the object, it stays with the object. It does not stay with the object because it's not filled with the object. Why we have no a calm in the mind, because the mind is not filled with the object of its observation. When the mind is filled with the object of its observation, it does not go anywhere. It stays right there. So, uh, when the meditator, as explained in Visuddhimagga, uh, feels satisfaction with the observation of the in-breath and out-breath, with the uh, mindfulness meditation on the in-breath and out-breath, his mind then, due to the continuity in this experience of happiness, with in-breath and out-breath, then settles on the breath. So he will experience, due to that, the more subtle breath and mind attached to the breath. Now, uh, if uh, as explained in the scriptures, the Buddhist scriptures are saying that the, the real experience of meditation is the experience of upeksha sha. Hmm? There is no deep concentration and insight without upeksha without equanimity. Each and every state of shamatha and vipassana, which, is, uh, gone, which has gone deep, is connected with the experience of equanimity of mind. When that means when the meditator is able to practice equanimity in regard to this more subtle breath and more subtle mind, which he is experiencing with happiness, then uh, his mind, due to this more developed wisdom in observation of the in-breath and out-breath, more developed uh, Mindfulness will experience still more subtle mind and more subtle breath. Hmm? Then the uh, meditator will enter deeply into the process of uh, appeasement of mind. On the base of mindfulness of in-breath and out-breath. Hmm? We have mentioned the nine steps which explain in the northern tradition 
uh, of Buddhism, the process of learning samatha. Hmm? The first step is placing the mind on the meditation object. In order to learn to meditate, you have to learn first to place the mind on the meditation object. If the mind is not placed on the meditation object, what will it do? It will follow its fancies uh, when the uh, outer sound appears clear, it will start thinking about the outer sound. What are they saying? This, like today, some children playing there, so it will follow uh, what they are saying. If some form becomes clear, uh, he starts uh, thinking about that form. Hmm? I like it, I don't like it. If some sensation in the body becomes clear, he starts thinking, oh, this uh, knee is giving me trouble, now it's uh, the hip giving me trouble, now it's the shoulder giving me trouble. Then he will remember some good thing he has eaten day before yesterday, then he will start maybe uh, next week I can go to the same restaurant, I enjoyed that very much. Hmm? Then he start uh, remembering I like that touch of some uh, uh, and maybe some lady he has met uh, some time ago. <laughs> then he will indulge in all kinds of uh, uh, fancies. Hmm? This is the nature of the mind, uh, which has no mindfulness. Hmm? Uh, so, uh, in order to prevent these uh, fancies, you start by placing your mind on the meditation object. When the mind is uh, placed on the meditation object, you can avoid uh, all these uh, uh, fences which uh, make your mind distracted and agitated. Uh, because the meditator is not yet used to the practice of shamatha and vipassana, in the beginning stage, if you are a beginner, you will try to place the mind on the meditation object by uh, putting it there by force. Hmm? Uh, remember, uh, the, whenever you are using force, you are not using the wisdom. Whenever you are using wisdom, you are not, using, uh, you are not trying to force the things. If we try to force something, that means we have no wisdom. Hmm? And the beginner uh, in meditation, of course, is in a way in, the, in a very precarious situation because he is always trying, he knows he has to meditate, so he drags his mind by force to the meditation object. So he's experiencing all kinds of frustrations because when you're forcing the mind, it will give you trouble. Hmm? When you uh, uh, when you uh, don't force the mind, only then it will can bring you satisfaction. As long as you force it, it will always bring you trouble. Hmm? That is why I have mentioned, I think yesterday already, the Dhammapada is teaching uh, the properly, uh, properly uh, applied mind uh, is more beneficial for you than your father, mother or relatives. The unproperly applied mind is, uh, the, the, uh, is worse of all your enemies because it will give you a lot of trouble. So, uh, due to learning that 
by dragging the mind by force to the object, uh, one will only get frustrations. The meditator starts using more mindfulness to bring mind to the object. Only when he uses more mindfulness to bring mind to the object, the mind will stay with the object. When the mind stays with the object, he will start uh, feeling comfortable with it. Otherwise not. And when he starts feeling comfortable with it, so the first step in learning shamatha is to place the mind on the meditation object. The first, second step is to let the mind have continuity on the meditation object. In Sanskrit, stapayati, sam stapayati. When the mind has continuity on the meditation object, eventually the meditator starts realizing immediately when the mind goes away from the meditation object, that the mind goes away and he brings it back, not by force, but more by uh, mindfulness. This is the third stage of learning shamatha. This stage is called avastapayati. Ava means down. He brings mind back down to the meditation object. Hmm? So, uh, even so, at that stage, the mind can still go away from the meditation object. The, meditate, the mindfulness has ripened enough that the meditator brings it immediately back. He does not let it stay a long time away from the meditation object. At that stage, he's experiencing still more ease uh, with a meditation. Uh, the fourth stage, and we will end up here today, is called upastapayati. Upa means near. Stapayati, upastapayati, it means at the process of learning spontaneous application of the mind to the meditation object. Uh, the uh, mind always dwells at the vicinity of the meditation object. It never leaves the meditation object. So at the fourth stage of learning shamatha, learning appeasement of the mind, connected with purity of the mind, what happens? Uh, even so, you may have all kinds of feelings, you may have all kinds of thoughts, you may have all kinds of other perceptions. The mind never leaves the vicinity of the meditation object. It always stays with the meditation object. At that stage, the mindfulness is ripening. When the mindfulness has ripened, the second enemy of meditation is removed, and the second enemy of meditation is called the stolen mindfulness. That means You are thinking and remembering other objects and you lose the uh, meditation object. And you don't remember the instructions of the teacher or the instructions of that you have learned how to uh, stay mindful on the, if you work on in-breath and out-breath, on the in-breath and out-breath. 
and what are the skillful means of uh, staying mindful with the in-breath and the out-breath. Hmm? Mindfulness is all that. Mindfulness, we translate uh, smrti or nien, hmm? nien, Uh, literally means in Sanskrit or in Chinese means memory. Hmm? Why is memory translated as mindfulness? Because only when we do things with a, a mind that is concentrated, we will remember what we are doing. Hmm? Only, only when we live wholly our experience, we will remember it. If we don't live wholly our experience, we will don't remember it. You remember what in the past experience is good or bad, because they were very important and they involved all your personality, right? What did not involve all your personality, you will not remember. You tell me what you were thinking the uh, day before yesterday when you went to the toilet, you will not remember, <laughs> right? So we uh, remember only that which we experience uh, intensively. And the mindfulness is experiencing intensively what we are doing just now. So that our mind is not being affected by other objects in the sense of distracted by them. The mind which is mindful is perfectly aware of, of the other objects but its attention stays with the meditation object or with the object of what we are doing just now. Hmm? That is why the mindfulness uh, has the aspect of memory. Hmm? We only remember that which we live intensively. Practicing mindfulness is living intensively at present, remembering fully what we are doing just now. So recollecting to mind that which is happening right now. Hmm? When the force of mindfulness has ripened, it will always recollect the breath, even if other things are happening. It will always recollect the breath and it will recollect the instructions uh, necessary and the skillful means for keeping the mind attached to the breath. When this force of mindfulness have, has ripened, the awareness of defilements will become very, very acute. So one enters into the process of uh, removing defilements from the mind, of purifying the mind. The mind of samadhi is a pure mind. And how it goes further, we will explain tomorrow. Hmm? So that much for now. We can make a a little break and now time for uh, questions and answers. There are today only two questions, it seems. Hmm? Tomorrow, if you have any questions, uh, you put them in, in the box, huh? the red box, hmm? with a label, white label on it. Hmm? Everyone can see it.